over two centuries ago, a grim chapter unfolded in Australia, where human lives were taken with the same indifference as animal hunting. This harrowing saga culminated in the loss of countless Aboriginal lives, a tragic aftermath that still reverberates today. But how did this tale of cruelty unfold? Why did the English traverse oceans, arriving in Australia, only to hunt its indigenous people? What's up, guys? It's Tris. Today, we delve into Australia's hunting past and the enduring societal challenges it has left behind. Brace yourself as we uncover the dark history that continues to cast a shadow on our present-day society. If you find this video interesting, it would be great if you could support us by hitting the like button. Now, let's get started. Around 250 years ago, a profound technological revolution swept across England, ushering in an era where machines performed tasks previously done by human hands. Unemployment surged, especially in Britain's urban areas as countless individuals found themselves bereft of livelihoods, resorting to theft and fraud to survive. Faced with an overwhelming rise in criminals, the British government grappled with the burden of overcrowded prisons and the exorbitant costs of maintaining them. Thus, an audacious idea took shape we not deport these convicts. Who couldn't be contained within prison walls? The British government envisioned using them as laborers to open up new territories, thereby relieving the strain on their homeland. In 1776, the United States, a former British territory, declared its independence, refusing to accept British prisoners. Australia became the chosen alternative, a land already inhabited by indigenous peoples who had cultivated their own rich culture over tens of thousands of years. The British government, eager to claim Australia as its own, conveniently disregarded the indigenous people's deep connection to the land, contending that they didn't possess the same concept of ownership or engage in town building and farming. In the eyes of the British, Australia remained an inferior land, unclaimed and available for their taking. According to the prevailing global order, if land isn't claimed by anyone, it falls under the control of the First Nation to seize it. However, for a country to gain international recognition, it must adhere to certain formalities. Exploiting this one-sided perspective, the British government brazenly declared Australia as its own and began shipping convicts to this distant land. Tragically, the previously harmonious indigenous people of Australia bore the brunt of British selfishness. For the British to assert control over Australia and gain international recognition, they had to meet certain criteria. According to the prevailing international law at the time, known as terra nullius. They had to demonstrate that the land was unclaimed or uninhabited. The British government, eager to claim Australia as its own, conveniently disregarded the indigenous people's deep connection to the land, arguing that they didn't possess the same concept of ownership or engage in town building and farming. In the eyes of the British, Australia appeared unclaimed and available for their taking. In response, the British branded the Aborigines as savage criminals, subjecting them to capture and brutal killings. The British dehumanized the Aborigines, seeing them as unequal beings, granting themselves the license to commit unspeakable atrocities. Their methods of extermination were relentless, employing poisoned water holes, cliffs for pushing victims to their deaths, vicious dogs unleashed to maul them and even treating the hunting of aborigines as a recreational sport. The aborigines occasionally retaliated, but with their traditional spears and clubs for hunting, they stood no chance against the British armed with modern weaponry. Furthermore, the aborigines were not a homogeneous ethnic group. They comprised over 700 communities based on language and region, preventing their unity. Without a unified voice or representative, negotiations with the British remained futile, leaving their grievances unresolved. One of the sites marred by these massacres was the island of Tasmania, located in southeastern Australia. Lieutenant Governor George Arthur, a man 
who recognized his own role in the invasion and harbor. No ill will towards the aborigines, sought to find a way to minimize casualties on both sides. Lieutenant Governor Arthur devised a plan to establish a border on Tasmania, separating the British settlers and the aborigines entirely, to safeguard their rights to life. However, even after the border's establishment, the aborigines continued their attacks to secure the sustenance necessary for survival. And as retribution for the loss of their people, British casualties gradually mounted. Fueling growing animosity and fear within the British population, Arthur, who had initially discouraged violence, underwent a drastic change in perspective. The law eventually granted the British the national endorsement to legally kill any aboriginal person, solidifying their campaign of violence. The British were resolute in eradicating every last aboriginal person from Tasmania. Yet, as violence escalated, the British government grew concerned about the consequences of total annihilation. Fearing the extinction of Tasmania's aboriginal peoples, Arthur devised a daring operation known as Black Line. This audacious plan involved arming British settlers living on the island, tasking them with a sweeping search from one end of Tasmania to the other in hopes of locating any remaining aborigines assimilated among the British population. However, the operation proved imperfect, resulting in the killing of two aborigines and the capture of two others. The Black Line operation failed to pose a significant threat to the majority of Aboriginal people. Nonetheless, the Aborigines were incensed by this larger-scale action, exacerbated by their increasingly restricted living conditions and inadequate food supply. Finally, the Aborigines made a crucial decision, pressured by the British to retaliate. The remaining Aborigines were captured one by one, bringing an end to the war between the British and the Aborigines in Tasmania. Arthur, despite the prevalent advocacy among the British for complete extermination, believed such measures were unnecessary. Instead, he chose to relocate the captured aborigines to another island, where they would be free from British violence. Yet, the diseases introduced during this forced transportation claimed numerous aboriginal lives in the subsequent years. Following a series of battles and relentless hardships, the aboriginal population dwindled to a mere 100 to 200 individuals. Today, many believe that the population of full-blooded Tasmanian aborigines is extinct, a heartbreaking testament to the consequences of British colonization. This policy, which endured until around 1970, led to the removal of at least 100,000 aboriginal children. Tragically, these children were stripped of their aboriginal identity. Known as the Stolen Generation, these children and their descendants bear the enduring scars of this dark chapter. In 2008, the Australian government publicly apologized to the Stolen Generation, acknowledging the immense pain inflicted upon them. However, the struggles faced by Aboriginal people persist today. Low educational attainment directly correlates with low employment rates resulting in a disproportionately high percentage of Aboriginal individuals living in poverty, reliant on welfare, and caught in cycles of alcoholism, substance abuse, and criminality. The challenges they confront continue to demand our attention, compassion, and efforts towards meaningful solutions. As we conclude our exploration of Australia's dark history and its ongoing societal ramifications, it becomes clear that acknowledging the past is essential to shaping a more inclusive and just future. It is our responsibility to confront these entrenched problems, advocating for change and fostering a society that upholds the dignity and rights of all its members. Only through understanding, compassion, and collective action can we begin to address the wounds of the past and forge a brighter path forward for everyone. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe for more insightful content. Take care and see you in the next video. Goodbye.